I am Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my verdict on the Zeiss Battis 85mm f1.8 lens for Sony FE. Now, you may see me with sunglasses on for a few episodes here. I took a softball in the face the other day, and so I'm doing you a favor, let's just say, by covering up part of my face, um, which isn't all that pretty at the moment. But anyway, uh, looking at the Battis lens, this is actually although it's one of the earlier Battis lenses, it's actually the one that I'm getting to the latest, um, simply because I was holding off on it until I could do my 85 millimeter showdown, which was something I'd planned to do for some time. And so this is at the tail end of that cycle, and I've spent a lot of time with the Battis, but not just with the lens, but comparing it to all of, basically all the competitors that have come since its release. Since, if I'm not mistaken, it is the earliest released lens of the group. And so, um, you know, and added to that, I've also had an opportunity to look at an 85 millimeter Loxia lens, 85 millimeter uh, Viltrox manual focus lens, and so a total of eight 85 millimeter lenses for Sony at this point, not to mention those that I've looked at adapted onto Sony bodies. And so, uh, suffice it to say, I've got a pretty broad frame of reference to compare the Battis to at this point. So while the Battis formula was somewhat unique when it was released in that these were autofocusing lenses for Sony, and so the very you know, connection of an autofocus Zeiss lens was in itself unique, and a little bit less so at this point because of the release of other Battis lenses and also the Tuit series. But the Battis series, in my opinion, is much more refined than what I found the Tuit series to be. And so the Battis lenses feature uh, linear motors that give it, um, you know, speedy, quiet autofocus. It also is the only Sony 85 millimeter lens to have an optical image stabilizer, OSS, built into it, optical steady shot. And, and so as a result of that, it does have one unique feature that no other Sony branded or for Sony 85 millimeter lens has. Now, of course, that feature has become a little less relevant um, since the, the time of the release of the Battis 85 millimeter, and that at the time when it was released, Sony was not really rolling out their in-body image stabilization or steady shot inside. And so as a result, now basically all of the 85 millimeter lenses are working with a fairly level playing field in that the optical steady shot works quite well. And uh, while I didn't uh, clinically test them side by side in real world everyday use, frankly, I didn't find much of a difference between any difference really between the Battis and its built-in steady shot and the in-body image stabilization um, that you know compensated for all of the other lenses. Now, if you happen to be shooting with a body that does not have IBIS, Obviously, optical steady shot might be intriguing to you, and so you might want to take a look at that. In terms of the build and construction of the lens, this is a very nicely built lens. It has a lightweight alloy metal uh, barrel to it. It has a rubberized focus ring, and it comes standard with a fairly deep lens hood, one of the deeper lens hoods of the bunch. The lens hood itself is plastic, um, finished to try to blend as much as possible with the metal body of the lens itself. And so, looking at uh, the Battis lens, it is 3.62 inches or 92 millimeters, both in length and in width. The front filter thread on the Battis is 67 millimeters. Which... Now, the Battis um, it has a reasonable reproduction ratio of 0.126 times, which is, um, you know, no 85 millimeter lens that I'm aware of is great for reproduction, but it does, that's actually in the upper tier of the pack there. It has 11 elements in eight groups, and it weighs in at 452 grams or 15.9 ounces, making it, you know, fairly lightweight and a nice fit on the very various uh, Sony bodies that I've put it on. Now, when it comes to the autofocus performance, in my comparison, I, I did a, a number of autofocus comparisons um, test as a part of the 85 millimeter showdown. So if you want more information, I recommend that you look at that. In, in some ways, the baddest results somewhat surprised me in that when I did my, my test, the Battis lens was actually in the bottom third of those when it came to tracking action, even though it felt like it was doing a better job than that. 
and uh, and so as a result, it it ranked just over the Sigma and the Viltrox lens, but behind like the Sony GM lens, and definitely behind the Sony FE 85 millimeter. So what happened with the Batis is that it actually had the fewest number of perfectly focused results, and so the um, focus results were often close, but not quite there. And so sometimes there would be just a little bit, it wasn't so much a lag, it was actually, it would be a little bit ahead of the subject as if it was overcompensating for that. And so, you know, the results weren't, you know, strongly off some of the other uh, better focusing ones, but certainly that stood out as being important to me. And then also when I did my IAF test, similarly, I had a couple of shots that were just a little bit off in focus, not by a large amount at all and probably still acceptable, but not perfectly focused, which you know led me to believe that maybe the lens could benefit from a firmware update um, considering that it hasn't had firmware updates since some of the recent Sony releases that have tweaked the way that IAF and uh, their tracking works since the uh, you know 3.0 and 3.1 firmware releases for, s for some of the Sony A7 bodies. And so I would love to see Zeiss roll out a, even though this is an older lens, to roll out a firmware update that maybe takes advantage of the improved focus algorithms of uh, Sony's own bodies. And so, uh, but you know, overall focus was good. And actually where it stood out as being the best of the bunch is actually in the refinement of the focus motor and the focus experience, particularly when doing video AF. Let's take a look at this. Size Battis 85 millimeter. I considered this to be the best of the performances of the 85 millimeter options in that it just felt the most refined. It was quieter, it was smoother, very little um, pulsing or settling on the subject. So as a video lens, I actually felt like it did quite a good job when it comes to that. Other kind of unique thing when it comes to focus here is that the Batis series is the only on Sony that I'm aware of to utilize an OLED screen that um, gives you feedback information. Now it is a focus by wire, like basically all lenses designed for mirrorless, and so it doesn't have a traditional focus window, but the OLED serves in that, that kind of functionality, and so it will give you uh, focus distance, or you can program it to show other things on there as a part of that. The rubberized focus ring has a feel that's actually similar to like the Zeiss Otis lenses. It can be a little bit of a lint collector as all of these uh, rubberized focus rings can be at times. Not too bad here, but what they have done a good job is in emulation of um, you know true manual focus that while the focus input is routed through the focus motor, there's a good level of damping and the ability to fine tune focus. There are a few advantages here also in that you know the mirrorless a manual focus process and that you will have an automatic magnification of the active uh, focus area and you'll also have an electronic distant window that will show either on the LCD or in the viewfinder. So those aids also help of course. In terms of my general observations with autofocus, I actually felt the lens did a really great job. I shot at events and uh, for the kind of things that I was shooting, I felt like focus was really refined, really accurate. And I was actually, as I said, somewhat surprised by some of my formal test results because in real world use, the Battis lens felt, felt really good. And so part of that is that it does have a fairly refined focus system at this point. Now, looking at the image quality, um, and again, I've got several episodes that break that down, and so if you would like more information, I recommend that you look at these. Frankly, there is not a whole lot to delineate any of these lenses from the pack. The f1.4 options obviously give you a, a more blurred background, and, and so give you a little bit more control over aperture. The f1.8 lenses, like the Battis, you know, they're two-thirds of a stop slower, and so there is a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to that. The biggest optical defect that stood out to me from the Battis is that it actually showed the highest levels of pincushion distortion of any of the 85 millimeter lenses that I tested. And I was somewhat surprised by that, but that's something that did stand out. If you're comparing it to the Sony 85 millimeter FE lens, F1.8, um, there's you know a couple of distinguishing areas, not by a huge margin though. The Battis has ever so slightly uh, richer color rendition, a little bit better micro contrast, 
um, maybe a little bit better edge and corner performance at wider apertures. But, you know, frankly, without them side by side, it might be hard to detect the differences uh, between the two lenses. The, you know, the Batis series is, has great consistent color, uh, good color accuracy. It uh, has a lot of great things going for it. But the biggest problem for the Batis lens is that since the time it's been released, there are a number of newer competitors at better prices that, um, you know, don't really offer up a whole lot less. And that kind of brings us to our wrap up the Battis lens priced at $1,199 is by far the most expensive of the three uh, 85mm f1.8 options. It's also more expensive than the Samyang f1.4 and the same price as the Sigma 85mm f1.4 art in Sony form. The only more expensive lens is the G Master f1.4 which is another $600. And so that kind of leaves it in a difficult position in the market in that while it's an excellent lens, one that is highly regarded by those that have owned and used it, there's a lot of people that are going to be looking at the value proposition and feeling like the baddest comes up short. So who's the baddest for in 2019? If you're someone who really needs the optical uh, steady shot, it could be a lens for you and worth the money for that. Um, if you're someone that already owns other Battis lenses and want a consistency of color and handling, then it could be appealing on that level. For those of you that are simply looking at a price to performance ratio, however, I do think that there are probably stronger options at this point. And uh, you know, you can get the, the Samyang 85 millimeter F1.4 that does basically everything pretty much as well as what the Battis does and of course has the advantage of a wider maximum aperture and thus softer bokeh rendering and uh, did a little bit better even in some of the autofocus tests though not all the Battis is still a great lens for video but you know it's a pretty compelling option when you consider that it can be had at around $700 compared to about $1,200 for this. Of course the Sony FE version is going to draw in a lot of people because it is literally half the price and gives you probably about 98% of the performance. And so you know obviously it is a hard sell. At the end of the day however it's your choice. It's your money to spend and so I've just tried to give you some information to help you in that decision. If you look in the description down below you can get more information by going to the landing page where I've got breakouts for video content, text reviews, photo galleries, all of these things that can help you to make an informed decision. There's also their uh, buying links if you'd like to purchase one for yourself and help to support the channel, or you can sign up to become a patron and directly support the channel, and as a reward, you get advanced screenings of upcoming content before anyone else. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that, click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.